Three, two. Hi, Wayne Collins. Hello, Glendora. How are you today, honey? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Oh, very good. And most of that is because of you. You do so much for me, Wayne. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Glendora. How are you today, honey? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Oh, very good. And most of that is because of you. You do so much for me, Wayne. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know how much I actually do. But. Well, you do a lot. It would take me a whole program to list it. Wayne, you started to tell me you saw the program and tell the people on which TV station and all that. Tell them the history. Yes, I saw it on channel 1301, um, the, uh, PC TV in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. And it didn't come on until 11.20. It huh. had been coming on at 11 a.m., but it didn't come on until 11.20 a.m. today. And it was it was the third time I've seen this program, by the that, way. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, I would like to ask Pat uh, Gormley if he would try to keep them just to play it twice, right? Yes, well, actually, the reason I saw it the third time was because I saw it on Monday at 5 a.m. Uh, well, even so, I think they had enough not to repeat, don't you, Wayne? Oh, I think so, from what you've been telling me. And I'm going to send them another huge pack. I'm going to, I have Pat's address right now, and when the boys come in on Monday or Tuesday of next week, we will send them, oh, like 12 more, okay? All right. So tell me about the program. Well, you talked a lot about the universe. Oh, nice. And you talked about the pandemic and compared it to the pandemic of 1918. Well, that's worthwhile, Bob. And um, you talked about blindness and putting your fingers in your supper. Put and, um, <laughs> you talked a lot about the universe, as you do quite often. That's good. You know what, Wayne? You can spell universe... Y O U N I V E R S E. Yes. Because we're all some of the universe, aren't we? Yes, yes, we are. Right. And uh, you spoke about Newton discovering his law of gravity. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. And maybe, too, about optics, how he discovered that white light was a combination of all the colors. Well, I don't think that you mentioned that in this particular program. You may have, but I don't yeah. remember that. But uh, this was the program, and it was a nice program, but it was the one in which the lighting was so poor for some reason. Yeah, great. I'm talking about Newton's optics, and the lighting is poor. That's because my one of my friends left without turning on the light, right, Wayne? That must have been it. Because we have a special 200-watt uh, camera light. Oh, uh, and the lighting was bad. Isn't that too bad? Well... There's not much to look at anyway. And it cut in halfway through your theme song. Now tell me about the theme song. Well, it didn't start until I said word, um, word of inspiration. It cut out the first two lines when I mentioned the name of the program. That's, that's our mistake. I, yeah. po I apologize. And you have several takes on the theme song. I don't know if whoever is putting that on always puts the first one on, but I think that there are several that are probably better than the first take. Gosh, honey, I don't want, think I can do much about that. Oh, okay. I mean, it just requires more eyesight than I have. Oh, I see. But uh, I'll certainly work hard to... Uh, well, sing the whole thing for us now, would you? Yes. A chat with Glendora, a show for a living right. A chat with Glendora makes your day so bright. Words of inspiration, jokes to make you smile. Come relax and chat with Glendora for a while. Who wrote that song? Uh, 
I'm sorry, what did you say? Who wrote the song? Oh, I wrote that song. <laughs> Who wrote the music and the lyrics? Yes, the music and the lyrics are original written by Wayne Collins. And who did the music? Who played the piano? I played the piano as well. <laughs> and who sang it? I sang it. There you are. But I didn't record the video. I didn't do the technical aspect. <laughs> well, how could you? <laughs> <laughs> and tell us who did that. Uh, that was done by Bill and Corrine Banker. Isn't that lovely? Yes. And, and the uh, Christian Science Church was kind enough to loan you there. The Steinway piano in the Sunday school room, and uh, Kareen arranged, made the flower arrangements that you saw. Yes, in the background of white. Yes. And their their lovely red carpet. Yes, and uh, Bill manned the camera. Now, do you and uh, and did the countdown? <laughs> yes. Most the equipment. Yeah. Now do you see what I mean, why I'm better, because you do so much for me? See that? Look at all that you did. Oh, well, that was, it was an enjoyable afternoon. That was in March of 2018. Oh, really? It was two years ago, huh? Yes. Uh, and you wanted it to, you wanted to chat with Gondora to have a theme song because of what reason? Well, I thought back to the Freddie Fryhofer show and how they had a theme song and so many people still associate the show with that theme song or the theme song with the show and still sing it and I thought it would be nice if you had a theme song so I composed it and uh, recorded it, taped it and called you and played it. You seemed to like it and you used it on your show. Oh I'm so glad you did that. That was pure philanthropism. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, now Wayne can we uh, could you read me the first the paragraph? Hourly reminder. Thank you, uh, Google. Uh, could you read the first paragraph of Chapter 2 of Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Erty? Yes. I'll do that. I'll tell you, honey, my leg is better. I'm not kidding you. Do you feel that it's been a complete healing? Oh no, not a complete no. healing, but I, it is, as I said, it is better. Have you been able to do away with the brace? Oh no. Oh, okay, because you were talking about the brace on your program today. Oh really? What was said about that? Uh, that it was, you felt that at that time that that was what was helping you. Oh, no question about it. That you had been putting it on correctly and you learned how to do it correctly <laughs> and it made a difference. <laughs> well, it has six straps, Wayne. Yes, you mentioned that. <laughs> now, um, this is chapter two. It's called Atonement in Eucharist. Atonement, A-T-O-N-E-M-E-N-T, -E -E and Eucharist. Yes, and it gives um, three uh, Bible quotations at the beginning. The first one says, And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. That's from Paul. And the second, oh, wait a second, honey. Could you repeat that? Yes. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. And it's St. Paul. And where is that? Where is that in the Bible? I don't remember that. I can't place it myself. I can look it up for you, but I it, in time. But what, what is it saying, honey? I have a problem with what it's saying. They that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. In other words, they become more spiritually minded. Oh, okay. And the second one says... There's no question about it, Wayne. When you do become more spiritually minded, your health is better. There's no, I, I have personal knowledge. What do you think? I agree with you. This one says, uh, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. That was also for Paul. Now what does that mean? Well, people were talking about the fact that he was baptizing them, but then he said, well, I didn't baptize very many people. I came to preach the gospel. He mentioned a few people who were baptized by him, but that was not his main purpose. Oh, yeah. Well, what is the, what is the difference between the two? Is preaching the gospel better than baptizing? Well, I believe he just, it was that he 
wanted to impart the truth of the gospel to people rather than to perform ritual. That would oh, okay, I get it now. And it says, For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And that's the quotation from Jesus. What did that mean? Well, that was from the Last Supper. When he said, I will not drink of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Tell me what that means. What what does mean drinking of the vine mean? What's that mean? Well, drinking of the the grape juice. What remember he? Oh, he won't. Did, he wouldn't drink it. No, remember he distributed it to the disciples. Yeah, this is my blood and this is my body. Yes. So now the text of the first chapter begins. It says atonement is the amplification of man's unity with God, whereby man reflects divine truth, light, and love. That's too much for me. Let's go to the first phrase, hon. Go to the first what? The first phrase of that sentence. Atonement? Yes, atonement is? The amplification of exemplification of man's unity with God, whereby... That's good enough right there. Okay. Let's stop that. Now let me feel that one. That's what atonement is, because if you... If you do atone, you are right with God. Is that what it means? No, it's uh, Jesus' atonement brought man into unity with God. Oh, okay. Whereby man reflects divine truth, light, and love. In other words, man becomes or reflects the qualities of God. And well. that's, so Jesus of Nazareth taught and demonstrated man's oneness with the Father, and for this we owe him honest homage. His mission was both individual and collective. He did life's work aright, not only in justice to himself, but in mercy to mortals to show them how to do theirs, but not to do it for them, nor to relieve them of a single responsibility. Jesus said... Oh, wait, wait a second. I... I can see all that, don't you? Yes. I can see all that. To me, it's no stretch at all. That there's just one, and it's God. And that we're all some of God. That's all there is. There's just God. Yes, God is all in all. It says, Jesus acted boldly against the accredited evidence of the senses, against pharisaical creeds and practices. Yes, he did. And yes, he did. Remember how he bawled out the Pharisees? Yes, and it said, and he refuted all opponents with his healing power. Yeah, yeah. So that's the first paragraph. And that's good enough, you know, that's enough to chew on today. Yes, it is. Uh, would you like a case history? Oh, I would, yes. Tell them about these, um, uh, these uh, testimonials. Where do they appear? In a book? Yes, they're in the, it's at the very back of, of Science and Health, the key to the scriptures. It's the last chapter, and it's entitled Fruitage. Oh, good, good. Yes, please read us one. Now, this is a very lengthy one. It's a remarkable healing, and it runs on, runs for the greater part of three pages. Uh, that's too much, honey. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's too much. I would love to hear it, but it's really too much for the TV to carry. Could we go to the next one, which is shorter? We could. Um, I could just, um, I could read the first part of it, because the first part of it uh, okay. describes the healing of a child. And oh, that is this goes a... on where the mother um, described some of her own healings. So I could just read the first couple of paragraphs that describe this child's healing. Sure. And it says, nine years ago, my only child was hovering between life and death. Some of the best physicians in Boston had pronounced his case incurable, saying that if he lived, he would always be an invalid and a cripple. Oh. One of the diseases was gastric catara. He was allowed to eat but very few things, and even after taking every precaution, he suffered to the extent that he would lie in spasms for half a day. Oh. He also had rickets, physicians saying that there was not a natural bone in his body. Oh. It says, it was while he was in what seemed to be his greatest agony, and when I was in the deepest, darkest despair, 
that I first heard of Christian science. The bearer of the joyful tidings could only tell me to come and hear the wonderful things that Christian science was doing. I accepted the invitation, for I was willing to try anything to save my child. And the following Friday evening, I attended my first meeting, which was in the Mother Church of Christ Scientist. Long before the service began, every seat was filled, which was amazing to me, being an ordinary weekly meeting. And that night I realized from the testimonies given that Christian and science was a religion for which I had been searching for years. Wow. The next day I went to find a practitioner but was unable to get the one who had been recommended, he being too busy. On my way home I thought of some of the testimonies which I heard the night before of people being healed by simply reading Science and Health. I resolved at once to borrow a copy and not dreaming of the sacrifice that my friend would make by conferring such a favor, I went and asked her for a loan to Science and Health. I never saw anyone part so reluctantly with a book as my friend did with her copy of the textbook. Bless her heart. Um, I read it silently and audibly day and night in my home, and although I could not seem to understand it, yet the healing commenced to take place at once. Really? The little mouth, which had been twisted by spasms, grew natural, and the child was soon able to be up playing and romping about the house as any child should. Hooray! Well, that's a good place for me to stop. Yes, that's excellent. You did a good job truncating that, Wayne. Oh, thank you. Uh, oh, that was excellent. Now, and I, I feel already I've been going to a Christian practitioner now for how long? Two weeks, is it? I think so, yes. And uh, I feel a lot better. Not only my leg but also my whole personality, my whole spirit. And Wayne, I want to, I have a new insight on that. Not only is it uh, getting your mind off of yourself and getting it off of your ego and saying you're not paying, going to pay any attention to this knee, but Wayne, it's the fact that she cares about you and she prays for you. Yes. That in itself has a tremendous therapeutic whop. Yes, that, that's what she would do. And so she, that's very good. She would be praying on your behalf. Yes, yes. So it's, it's so good to hear that you're being helped and that your knee is feeling so much better and that you're feeling better in general. Well, I think you must be praying for me also. Yes, yes I do, every day. I believe in all that. And I thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. And I'm here to do the same for you. Now, Wayne, would you go over to Compton's Encyclopedia and yes. read about radiation? Yes. Yesterday, we read about colors. And that was where we left off. You see, uh, I believe one way I worship God, the universe, is how these beautiful, magnificent creations and one of those is the electromagnetic spectrum, which, which is visible light. And uh, we're reading the uh, Compton's article on that. We read a little bit every day. Yes, and uh, so we're in Compton's Encyclopedia. This is volume 12, page 30E. And we're up fluorescence and photochemical effects. Fluorescence and photochemical effects. Yes. It says, when light is received by the eye, almost all the energy is absorbed in chemical reactions. Many substances, however, will absorb and re-radiate light by the process of fluorescence. The colors in the exciting light are determined by the energies and frequencies of the photons which carry it. If these energies are sufficient to excite electrons in some substance which they strike to more than the first level of excitation, the electrons can drop back to their normal or at least energy states by any choice of steps between their excited and their normal levels. At each drop, any electron will lose only part of the energy which it, which it absorbed. Therefore, the photon which it re-radiates from this drop will have a longer wavelength and a lower frequency than those of the absorbed radiation. 
A striking example is that of chlorophyll, the coloring matter in plants which looks green in sunlight. If radiated with orange light only, it fluoresces a deep red. Huh. Another example is a fluorescent light. It obtains energy from excited mercury vapor in its tube. The vapor gives a high portion of high frequency, invisible ultraviolet, which falls upon substances called phosphorus on the inside lining of the tube. Huh. These, these re-radiate colors of visible light. Phosphorus <laughs> gives much more visible light and much less infrared, which goes only into heating, than would the same amount of energy used to heat a filament in an ordinary incandescent bulb. Isn't that something? Thank you for that, Wayne. Oh, well, you're welcome. I just that just makes me appreciate God and and praise God all of these great creations. And you know we're we're being pushed all the time to create, Wayne. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes, we are. Uh, a man wrote a book, John Savage, and it was hammer and nail. And he said, do something with hammer and nails or make something all the time. Be creative. And you know something? If we're not, it nags at us. Yes. Yeah. Now, there's just one more paragraph in this section. And it says, photons of light also carry the right amounts of energy for certain photochemical effects. The photons excite the electrons in the chemical bonds of some molecules to the point of altering or breaking the bond. This happens in photography. Absorbed photography, I'm sorry, absorbed photons of light break down certain silver salts and leave pure silver in the film or plate to register the photograph picture. See also photography. What do you know? So uh, that completes that section. What's our next section tomorrow? Biologically powerful ultraviolet. Oh, goody, ultraviolet. That's good. Thanks, Wayne. Oh, you're welcome. I have some expenses. Could you take them down? Yes, yes. Just let me grab a pencil here. Uh, it's pretty hard to keep books with no eyes. Yes. And Wayne has been doing this for me now for a year. Right, Wayne? You've been yes. kind enough to take the expenses down, sort them out, put them in the right columns, add them up at the end of the month. I do that. Yes, that's very okay. nice of you. expenses do we have today? Uh, well, uh, today none, but yesterday... Uh, we had a hundred and fifty dollars to uh, Benny uh, Raphael for his work Monday, Wednesday, Friday afternoons. Right. It would be a hundred and fifty dollars. Yesterday was the twenty-eighth. And what else do we have? I think that's it, Wayne. Okay. Yeah. They have now. Yeah. Can you uh, can you tell the folks any of the jokes that we're going to tell on the TV next week? Uh, yes, the woman was asked why she walked her paycheck to the bank. And she <laughs> said because it's too little to walk by itself. It's too little to go by itself, yes. It's little to go by itself. It's too yeah. little to go by. <laughs> That's a good one. What else? Oh, and um, we have... Uh, See, uh, the boss is, is mean but fair. He's mean to everybody. Yeah, the boss is mean, but he's fair. He's mean to everybody, yes. <laughs> right. And this toy is too complicated, but it's... Uh, it, oh, the mother says, isn't this toy too complicated for a child? And the salesman said, no. What? The salesman said, no, it always comes out wrong because it's like life in today's world. Well, that's how to ruin a joke, honey. <laughs> <laughs> but you tried and you get a credit. The salesman said, no, uh, it is designed to adjust a child to this day's world. No matter how he puts it back together again, it's wrong. Yes, you told that much better than I would. <laughs> now, another one, uh, at the library with a card, we can get a book or a CD or a DVD. But when he said, can I take out the librarian, he was told, she's for reference only. <laughs> okay, could I fix that one up too? Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, you mean with this little card I can take out any CD I want? Yes. With this little card I can take out any book I want? Yes. With this uh, little card I can take out any DVD that I want? Yes. With this little card I can take out any library I want? And then what do they sell them? You see with all, no, that's just for reference only. Yeah, right, librarians are for reference only. <laughs> Well, how about you just give me the top line and I'll do them for you. Okay, the one, who's who in America? Yes, you know anybody, folks, who's in who's who in America? No, but I know plenty who are in who's through in America. Okay, and then we have one about the hometown and the lowest death rate. Would you repeat that, please? Oh. Yeah, why does your hometown have the lowest death rate? Do you know, Wayne, why does your hometown have the lowest death rate? It has three gas, gas stations and a speed trap. <laughs> no, Wayne, you got two jokes mixed in them. Uh, his home has the, his hometown has the lowest death rate, folks, because nobody wants to be caught dead there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm yeah. looking at my notes that I scribbled. Well, that's right. It isn't fair. You, she gives Thank them God. to you. Christine gives them to you so fast because she's at a fast rate to get everything done. And then you can't be taking everything down in long time. Oh, I can just get down as much as I can here. Um, the Knights of Columbus? Yeah, what about them? What did they... Oh, they formed a, a coal... Oh, the town was so small that the Knights of Columbus formed a coalition with the Masons. Masons, and what did they call themselves? The Masonite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> last year, Maryland was uh, depressed, La and the last year, Maryland uh, was miserable and depressed. Miserable and depressed. But uh, this year, she turned that all around, and what is she? she this year, she's depressed and miserable. <laughs> okay, Wayne. <laughs> Listen, thank you for that. Do you have? Do you know how long we've been together here? It's only supposed to be 28 minutes. Do you know when we started? Well, it's uh, now 2.25. Let's see um, what I can see here. The entire phone call is so, forth, so far been 28 minutes. But that's perfect, perfect. Uh, then it's time for us to say goodbye. Would you like to sing a hymn for the people? What would you like to hear? Uh, uh, How about Abide With Me? Oh, gee, that would be lovely. Abide with me, past all the evening tide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail, Comforts flee, help of the helpless, oh, abide with me. Grace and peace, everybody.